during the actual meeting. Um, if we're not able to get to it, we will create an FAQ that we will provide to you all online also. Um, there's one other thing I want to mention, and that's the senior baccalaureate. Um, that's a tradition that um, we've had over the last several years. However, the school is not able to plan it because it's a religious ceremony, nor is it necessarily the job of the PTTA. So if there's any parents interested in planning a baccalaureate for a senior class, please contact Cummings, um, Ms. Brown, or Ms. Scales, and um, they will assist you at the school level to um, get that information out to the senior class because we can't um, participate in planning it per se. And with that said, I'm going to pass the um, mic on to Ms. Scales and she's going to lead the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Fazell, I appreciate that. Hello and welcome to the graduation information session. My name is Emily Scales and I am not only a teacher at Wakefield but also one of the graduation coordinators along with my partner, Robin Brown. Hi, everyone. Nice to see everybody here. Additionally, tonight, we're also going to be having Mr. Cummings that will be presenting. Good evening, everyone. It's welcome. It's an honor to be here with you this evening. Um, a couple of information slides that you're going to see up there is also the senior class advisor, which is Ms. Christina Bradford, along with student council advisors, which I wear multiple hats, and I myself, along with Rachel Bentley. Jostens and Strawbridge information is posted there as well. Jostens is for our caps and gowns and yearbook, and Strawbridge is accountable for our photos, yearbook pictures, and cap and gown pictures. On the screen is the updated senior timeline. This was just updated on our website for download, but you'll see various events that are coming up. We're gonna go into these greater in depth, but this is a great piece of paper that you could print off, put up on the refrigerator just to kind of keep things um, on tabs and understanding what's coming up for you. A couple of things you should see is some graduation dates, some rehearsals, senior parade, virtual awards night. So we have a lot of good information coming and we're gonna go through this more after we do a few other announcements. I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Ms. Melissa Onsbacher. She is our senior coordinator and one of our extraordinary counselors. She does a great job and she's gonna to talk to you about some senior student services information. Melissa? Okay, hi, I'm Melissa Onsbacher and I am one of the counselors and I'm also the senior coordinator um, and I represent student services. A couple things I wanna cover, um, final transcripts, scholarship reporting form, senior survey, scholarships, and then um, where you can follow us on Twitter. I'm actually, um, I'm gonna start with the scholarship reporting form, if you don't mind. Um, this is located on the um, Wakefield High School website, and you're going to go to students, and then seniors, and then there's a senior student services um, link. Okay, and, there, and we, um, this is data we collect every year, not only for Wakefield High School, but also for the county. Um, they receive this information from all high schools. And again, we love to celebrate the accomplishments of our students. And there's a little bit of competition between our high schools to see, you know, who gets the most awards. So we really appreciate it if you would upload that information into the Google form. Um, I checked today, only 12 of our seniors have filled out that form and there are over 400 of you and I know there are scholarships out there. So um, please complete the form. If you have questions about that Google form, you can email me at mansbacher at wcpss.net. Okay, the other um, link that you're gonna see on the senior student services is the senior survey. That is also data we collect every year. We wanna hear from every single senior regardless of what you plan to do next year. Um, this information, again, helps us see where you all are headed, and then that helps to inform our school profile every year. Um, you know, what percentage of students go to four-year college, go into the military, et cetera. So please, please, please fill out um, those forms for us. Um, so for final transcript, um, that's also gonna be on the, um, 
our website. If you go to um, the senior tab, on the left-hand side, you're going to see a, a place where it says request transcripts. And it breaks it down for you beginning of the year, mid-year. Now we're at final transcript stage. And it highlights the instructions for you um, based on where your student may be going, whether it's in state or out of state. If you have questions about transcripts, again, you can email me, you can email your academic or your alpha counselor. Um, our registrar, Ms. Favors, Ms. Privet is amazing. And if you have questions about that, she's at cfavors at wcpss.net. Um, and that's going to be for final transcripts. Um, and then scholarships also available on the website. You can email about me about that as well. But we have a um, scholarship bulletin um, that's done monthly. And so you're going to have to scroll down, click, you know, obviously to April, May, June. Um, I think we're going to have some PTSA information coming up. Um, but we list those scholarships by date that they're due. And if you are unable to access a direct link for the scholarship on um, through that bulletin, please, please, please email, email me. I know I was working with a bunch of students last week on some scholarships. Um, some things I have access to and other things are, are public. So don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions about that. Um, and lastly, we're at WHS student services SVCS. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at D-A-V-M-E-L-A-N-S. Um, and that's my professional account. So I often retweet and post things um, specific to seniors. Um, I think that's it, yeah? I think that's it. And we're just so proud of you. Um, and it's been a pleasure working with all of you. And, and so thank you. And reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Onsbarger. We appreciate that. All right. PTSA scholarships are up on the screen as well, as Ms. Onsbarger indicated. These PTSA scholarships are available through their particular website, which is also linked on the school's website. Scholarships available are on the screen. I'm going to let Ms. Brown talk a little bit more about that. Good evening, everyone. Um, the PTSA scholarships are one-time $1,000 scholarships, and they're available in these areas that are bullet pointed on the slide, academic, activities and service, first generation, community college, performing and visual arts. Students are eligible to apply for these scholarships through the um, links on our home website. Through April 23rd at 11.59, they will close at that point. The first phase is the application. Then students will have an interview, typically now in COVID, through a Google Meet with a member of the PTSA board to determine the final winners. And those will be announced at senior night. And we'll get to that. We'll talk about senior night a few slides down the road here. All right, cap and gown pictures are going to be by appointment only this year. This is a little different than what we've done in the past where it was typically part of the school day. This is an optional um, photograph that you do not have to take. It will not be included in the yearbook. This is simply if you would like to have your photograph taken in your cap and gown. The appointments are going to be done through Strawbridge. That information will be posted on the school's website. It is not up there yet, so please just bear with us and be a little patient, and we'll get you into the appointments. Um, these will be taken in the Wakefield Media Center, again, by appointment only, and you must have your cap and gown. So if you have not received your cap and gown yet, there will be another pickup, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So you want to make sure that you have your caps and gowns. They are not allowing caps and gowns this year to be used between students, obviously, because we're in a COVID world and we want to maintain your safety at all times. These will be also available to purchase through Strawbridge, depending on what type of package you want. I don't know much about the packages, I just know that they offer them, which is a wonderful opportunity for those who would like to have those professional photos taken. The next Jostens pickup for students who have ordered their caps and gowns and any other of the announcements, et cetera, is Thursday, April 22nd from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. This is a drive-up event right in the front circle at the school. 
It's only for the seniors that have already ordered and paid for their items online. They can still be ordered online and we will have them available at senior day on May 26th. The, the first big event that we've got coming up for our seniors that we are so excited about is our senior graduation parade. This will be on Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. And the seniors can decorate their cars, drive through, they'll get their um, yard signs. We've got those coming for them. We'd love to see them dressed in their caps and gowns. It's one extra celebration of the seniors and all that they have accomplished in their four years at Wakefield. We do ask that the students come during those times that are listed by Alpha to keep the traffic flow going. But they can break cars. They can, we would also suggest someone else drive them so that they can fully participate in this uh, parade. Our virtual senior night awards is going to be Tuesday, May 25th at 6 p.m. This is an online only event that we will pre-record and post at 6 p.m. That's when all of the senior department awards will be announced, the scholarship winners will be announced for PTSA, and other various scholarships that come through the community. For example, the State Employees Credit Union Award is awarded that night. That is a not a live event. We will pre-record it and we will post it on our YouTube channel and on the school's website at 6 p.m. Um, senior day schedule. We are going to hold a traditional senior day like we normally do in a regular year. We're very excited to bring this back. We have missed senior day. This is one of our favorite days for our seniors. It is going to look a little different, of course, just because things are a little different this year. But what we're going to be doing is hosting senior day on Wednesday, May 26th, starting at 10 a.m. This is going to be on an asynchronous day, so you don't have to worry about classes. You're going to be able to come to school a little bit later, which is nice. And we're going to do a lot of different activities for you. Some I'm going to tell you now, some I'm not going to tell you about quite yet. We like some things to be a surprise. But you're going to arrive starting at 945, and we're going to be starting in the gym and doing most of our day in the gym. We're going to line up by ceremony groups, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, so you'll be able to figure out which group you are. And we're going to do a couple of rehearsal things to start getting us in the mindset for graduation, learning how to line up, who's in front of you, who's behind you, how to walk, how to sit, how to stand. We have very specific things that we do at graduation. Then we're going to present the Senior Night Awards. As Ms. Brown said, we're going to hand out those awards at Senior Day so that you've gotten your information, who's won, who's gotten these great, most improved and best all around the night before, and then we're going to give you those medals and those other awards the next day and make a little bit of a fuss over you live in person. Next, we're going to do honor society courting. Some of you have been still working through your honor societies all year virtually, and we're going to make sure you get that recognition for those courts. Your advisor should have already reached out to you about purchasing your courts, and if they haven't, just be patient. I'm sure they're going to get to it soon. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, students, most of you, your advisors, for example, beta club kiddos, I send an email to your student's email for you to tell you that those are ready for purchase through OSP. Students, we cannot, 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 cannot tell you enough. You should, especially now, be checking those emails daily. The best way and really the only way that the teachers can send out mass information to you, and especially Ms. Scales and I, I lost my connection again. Is for us to be able to email you. Well, that has to be done through your student email account. Okay, so make sure you're checking those every day. And as Ms. Scales was telling you, those Latin honor stoles will be given out those days, along with the silver stoles for those that do not have the Latin honor. So everyone that comes will be getting a stole. Um, meeting two, I apologize. My, for some reason, that meeting keeps kicking me out and I'm the microphone, so I apologize for that. Um, we are recording this, so please don't worry about missing something. The presentation will also be posted. 
once we've done the honor society courting, we're also going to do your Latin honor and academic stoles, which we're going to show you what those look like in a few slides. And we're going to do a few other activities again that we haven't quite told you about. And then we're going to do our senior picnic, which is a tradition. We always do the picnic and our goal is to get you guys outside safely, of course, socially distanced, of course, and we're going to have some fun. We're also going to give you your yard signs. And so you can have um, a beautiful sign that we created that you're going to be able to put in your front yard and brag about. And then this will also be your opportunity to do your final Jostens pickup. If you did not get your cap and gown on April 22nd, or let's say you ordered after then, we will have those available for you as well. Then we'll end senior day and everybody will get to go and have a little bit shorter of a day, which isn't a bad deal. We always enjoy senior day. You guys get to come. We ask you to dress up in your future gear, which when we say future is if you've already decided on a college or if you're joining the military, you know you're going into a career already and maybe you have a work shirt you want to rock. We love for you to show up in that gear so we know where you're heading when you leave us and see how we've prepared you to move on. We are going to also have a graduation rehearsal. This will be our official rehearsal. It says final um, because we're going to be doing this in the stadium. We're going to get ready to actually do our graduation. This will be Monday, June the 7th. Please make sure you mark your calendars for this or print off that senior timeline, take a picture of it, something so that you can add all these events to your calendar. This is a mandatory event. Ceremony one will be at 6 p.m. And ceremony two will be at 7 p.m. We are going in order of events, so we will tell you what your ceremony group here is in just a second. The big deal about this is not only are you going to get to rehearse for graduation, but this is where you're going to receive your tickets to graduation. So four tickets for graduation. All righty. So graduation tickets. All seniors will be eligible for four tickets to graduation. You'll get those at that final graduation rehearsal. You'll submit, because for contact tracing, you're gonna have to fill out a form at graduation practice with the names of the people that will be receiving those four tickets. So for example, if my kid's graduating and her dad and her grandparents are coming, for those four tickets, I will have to put those four people's names into a Google form so that we have all the information. We're in that COVID world now that we've got to know who is actually in attendance at every event. This is already being done at sporting events. So anyone who has attended a sporting event, you're very familiar with this process. Those that haven't, it's very streamlined and we'll, um, the kids will be able to fill out those forms. So it's important that when you come to practice on June 7th, that you know who is receiving your four tickets so that you can put those names into the form. The tickets will not be distributed until after those names have been submitted. We can't release a ticket unless we have a name to go with it. Also, make sure that you have cleared all your fines and fees, et cetera turned in your books, all of that stuff before that rehearsal on June 7th. Because if there's any fines or fees owed, books, any of that, uniforms for the athletes, you will not be able to receive your tickets until those things are taken care of. I will say if you have questions, we are going to ask you hold your questions until the end. We our goal is to cover everything and you may have a question that we're going to answer. The other procedural thing I'd like to remind everybody is please make sure that your computer or your microphone is on mute so that we don't get interference in the meetings. Um, if we're going to go ahead and take a look, as I said, um, or as Ms. Brown said, the schedule here is now on the screen. So group one is A through LI. Our commitment is to ensure that we do not change these groups, even based on the RSVP. So you can go ahead and lock these days and times in. This is our goal is to ensure that this does not change. So this will start, um, our graduation ceremony will start at 830. We are going to ask the seniors to be on campus no later than 8 a.m. in the gym, in their seat, lined up, ready to go. So we can do several different things. One, we have to check everybody in and make sure we know who is with us in um, graduation. Two, we have to make sure that your caps are looking great, your tassels are on the right side, your tie is straight. And we do several different things and reminders before the event. Guests will be allowed to enter the stadium starting at 8 a.m. for ceremony one. 
And then we will march the seniors in at 8.30 on the dot. Miss Brown and I are very, very particular about starting on time. And we want to make sure that we honor everyone's time at graduation and get everybody in. Group two, um, our goal is to do about an hour graduation and then get everybody ready to leave by 9.30. Group two, we will ask the seniors to start arriving at on campus in the gym at 1030. Again, this is dressed, ready to go, looking sharp, iron, pressed gowns, tie on straight. And then we will start the ceremony at 11 a.m. again on the dot. Um, our rain date is on the screen you see is Saturday, June the 12th. We will make sure that we make a decision about rain in a timely fashion, especially for that first ceremony, so that you aren't heading to campus and getting up super early when we're worried about lightning or rain or things like that. But we're going to have to play that a little bit by ear, and Mr. Bizzell will definitely be making that final decision. <coughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Scales, and welcome uh, students and parents of the class of 2021. We're excited. We have a few more weeks ago. I know we can do it, um, and it's a pleasure to speak uh, to you today. Um, in regards to uh, safety during our graduation uh, ceremony, please keep in mind that all persons in attendance must wear a mask at all times, and that mask uh, must fit securely over uh, the individual's nose and mouth and under the chin at all times. Uh, we are going to socially distance family groups. Uh, so family groups may sit together. However, they must be socially distanced by six feet or more from other families. Uh, any person in attendance who has tested positive or been exposed to another person diagnosed with COVID will not be admitted to the ceremony. And this includes graduates. On the next slide, what I'll do is share um, information that is current as of today uh, from Wake County and just note that the Wake County uh, regulations are a little different from CDC and they're ever changing. So um, as they change, we will of course let our class of 2021 uh, know about these changes. But in terms of not being able to, to participate, uh, students cannot uh, have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the past 10 days. Um, if they have not, if they're not fully vaccinated and have been in close contact with someone diagnosed with COVID within the past two weeks. If they have a temperature of 100.4 or higher, or they're feeling sick or experiencing any symptom of illness, and those um, symptoms are listed below. Uh, and just note, Wake County, uh, the Wake County Public School System has eliminated um, temperature checks and health screening questions. And we ask that you conduct those prior to attending our graduation ceremony. For our graduation wardrobe, this is always the big question every year. What do we wear? This year's a little different because we do have to have our masks on. So we ask that for the gentlemen that they wear a school appropriate mask, a white dress shirt with a collar, a dark tie, black, gray, maroon, etc., or bow ties. We love the bow ties. Black or dark pants, black or dark shoes, and dark socks. We are not allowed to let you wear flip flops or slides. This is a safety precaution. You will be crossing the stage. You'll have to climb stairs. And the last thing you want to happen is as you're climbing the stair, the person behind you accidentally stepping on your flip-flop and you face plant. No one wants that. The other thing I'd like to remind the men and the, the ladies, do not, under any circumstances, hot iron your gown. You will melt it. The best way to get the wrinkles out, hang it on a hanger, put it in the bathroom when you're taking a hot shower, and that steam will let those wrinkles out. If you've already got it, stick it on a hanger and put it in your closet. The gravity will pull those wrinkles out. But if you hot iron it, you're going to melt it. All right. Wardrobe for our ladies. Once again, just like the gentleman, we are saying you need to be in a school-appropriate mask. When I say school-appropriate, just to reiterate, 
Try not to have any imagery on your mask, nothing that is going to be distracting. We would strongly recommend um, a paper mask because we're gonna be outside, it's gonna be quite hot, um, and that's gonna be a little lighter. We're gonna ask you to wear um, some type of light dress underneath your robes. Biggest thing with the dresses is gonna be the length. It needs to not go above your gown and it needs to not go below your gown. We're looking for uniformity. If you're not sure, I would strongly recommend trying on your gown with whatever you plan to wear underneath it. If you haven't gone shopping yet, maybe okay. take your cap or your gown, excuse me, with you. Um, we always get asked about shoes. This year's a little different. I'm going to be very honest with everyone about that. Typically, we do let the ladies wear pretty much whatever type of heel they want. However, this year, as we've um, stated, we're going to be in the stadium. And because we're in the stadium, we will be walking through the grass. So while you may wear black, maroon, silver, nude, or white shoes, it must be flat bottomed. Please hear me when I say flat bottomed means it can be a flat, like a ballet flat or something like that, but it also can be a wedge because that is flat on the bottom. What you cannot wear is going to be anything with a very small heel, a stiletto of anything. Any heel is going to, not only is it going to sink into the grass, which is dangerous for you when you're walking, if you haven't realized you've sunk in, and it's also not good for our grass. And I'm sure Coach Ward and Coach Stevens and Coach Wolf would be really appreciative if we could not mess up their grass. As Ms. Brown was also saying, no flip-flops and no slides. This is for your safety. I myself have tripped multiple times wearing flip-flops because they're not always the safe. We're also gonna say minimal jewelry. So nothing that is huge and large. And the reason we say that, especially the earrings, is when you have your cap on, you're gonna have a tassel. And a lot of the times what we'll see is the tassels get wrapped up in large hoop earrings or dangly earrings and something like that. And I've seen some very, very close calls when trying to move their tassel when they didn't realize their tassel was caught up and you could potentially cause some issues. We're also gonna say no purses or cameras on you. You need to make sure that my strong recommendation is addressed with pockets. So if you need a keys or your phone so you can get in contact with your loved ones afterwards, but nothing physically in your hand is going to be permissible. Again, it's about the look. We want you all to look like you belong together. Um, so please make sure that you plan ahead about where you're going to put your stuff. We will not be keeping up with anybody's property. We will not be allowing anyone to leave bags, purses, new other shoes in the gym because we will not be able to sit and supervise. This is a very large event that we're running and we just do not have the manpower to watch your personal effects. Ladies, also remember if you can wear open-toed shoes, That's you can wear sandals that are flat. Just make sure that your sandal has a strap that holds it on to the back of your heel so it's not flopping as you're walking. Your safety is of utmost concern for us. and We don't wanna see anybody face plant on that stage. All right, Latin honors is up. This is something we switched to a few years ago. Rather than the salutatorian and valid Victorian, we now as a county do Latin honors. This has become very traditional throughout a lot of the country. We're not the only ones that do this now. And I'm gonna let Ms. Brown kind of talk about what Latin honors looks like for Wakefield. There are three categories. Cum laude, which means that you have a overall GPA as of the end of the fall semester of a 3.75 to a 3.99. Remember that these Latin honors are based on what your GPA was at the end of the fall semester in January. Anything that has happened spring semester will not affect Latin honors. It does affect your final ranking in the class, but we cannot now change these Latin honors, they have been set in stone based on fall semester or your cumulative GPA through fall semester. Magna cum laude are for those students, it means great honor. 4.0 to a 4.249 and summa cum laude, which is highest honor. Those are students who have achieved a 4.25 or higher GPA. This is what our Latin honor stole looks like. So you can kind of have an idea. Every student will receive either one of these stoles as a Latin honor or a silver stole with a burgundy or not burgundy, maroon W on it. 
So the, you'll, everybody will have one of these stoles. We do ask if you receive a stole from a different honor society, for example, National Honor Society has a stole. This stole that you get from us, either the black one or the silver one, has to be on top. Your cords, the only cords that you will be allowed to wear at graduation are the cords that you receive on senior day. They are for the honor societies that we have at Wakefield. So if you receive a cord from a club or an outside organization, they are not allowed at graduation. The medals, if you receive a medal at senior day or a pin, Beta Club gets pins all the time. Those are things that you can wear on your gown at graduation. And then after this is over and you decide, I don't really want to keep my cap and gown anymore. If you do not want to keep it and would like to donate it back to Wakefield, we will be glad to take it. We'll have it laundered for students who may need it later in future years. You can drop those off at the front desk. What I would suggest is if you are going to donate it, Put it inside a Ziploc bag, fold it up, put it in a Ziploc bag, and just drop it off at the front desk. But feel free to please keep your tassel. Keep your tassel. We don't, we'll get new tassels for the new graduates, and you want to keep your tassel. That's a memory. I still have mine. I still have mine, and I've graduated a long time ago. All right. When it comes to actually graduating, these are some tips and etiquettes for our seniors. We have said no cell phones. I get that you're going to have it on you. We're not going to fight that fight. But what we are saying is you are not to have your cell phone in your hand on Twitter, on Snapchat, doing a TikTok in the middle of graduation. That's not going to happen. We also are going to have no gum in your mouth. That's part of what we're going to be checking from that 8 to 8.30 window and that um, 10.30 to 11 window. In your seating, you will be socially distant. So one of the things we want to make sure you understand is there cannot be any distracting going on from the students who are going to be on stage speaking, the administrators, different things like that. So no beach balls, no silly string, no yelling, no cheering, no stomping your feet, nothing like that. Caps are to be worn straight on the head. Every single year, we have to explain what parallel means. My partner here is a math teacher, and she can tell you all about what parallel means. Students, every year, I have to go around and go, pull your cap down, pull your cap down. But it's not And unfortunately, this needs to be flat. You will look silly with it leaned back, and we can't see your cap showing that you are a graduate of Wakefield High School. Speaking of caps, you are not allowed to decorate your cap. This is a Wake County policy. This is not a Wakefield policy, but we do enforce it. Tassels are to be worn on the right side because you have not graduated yet. If I am wearing a cap and gown, I can wear mine on my left because I graduated 20 plus years ago. But once you have graduated and Mr. Bazell announces that you are now an official graduate of the class of 2021 of Wakefield High School, he will tell you to turn those tassels and then you may return your tassels. At graduation, you will graduate in alphabetical order. The names will be called pretty rapidly to stay in that hour, but a little less rapidly because we're doing two ceremonies. You will need to make sure you're paying attention. Some students may not be joining us at face-to-face -face graduation because they're simply not comfortable with it in a COVID world. But we're still going to read their names because they still Absolutely. earned that honor. So you need to make sure you're paying attention to your name. I'm going to be standing right there with you, helping you just to make sure you're good to go and also keeping you in line, walking straight, heading to Mr. Bazal to get your diploma cover. We are going to ask that family and friends refrain from excessive noise. And I'm going to let Ms. Brown talk a little bit Lord, more. Lord, have mercy. I'm getting out of here now. One thing I'd like all of my seniors who are here currently to be aware of. We will have staff standing on the field with you at all times. I will be one of them. I will be one of them. And she will be one of them. And we're going to have a lovely group of customers that are going to make sure that you are behaving correctly and you are not interfering with our ceremony. If you misbehave and you do something like try to pull a prank, try to stand up and do a TikTok, do anything that we 
you know you're not supposed to do. Let's just start with that. Your diploma will be pulled and Mr. Bazell will be the one to decide when you get your diploma. Don't cross him. Please don't. Don't make his day any worse. Just sit, have a beautiful ceremony, and let's make mamas, daddies, grandmamas, aunts, uncles, friends, cousins, everybody proud of you. Okay, so for our, your guests, and seniors, I really need you to stress this to your guests. They must have a ticket to enter the stadium. Without a ticket, they will not be allowed in. Those names must have been submitted through that RSVP form that we will show you later or talk to you about a little bit later. When they are entering the graduation event, so they're entering the stadium, stadium they cannot bring in food, balloons, glass vases or containers. So if they want to bring in flowers, that's fine, but not in a vase. No book bags or large camera bags. They can bring their camera, but not in a big bag. Socially distancing. There's just not enough room in the stadium as we are keeping things socially distanced to have all this extra. No noisemakers, silly string, pom-poms, or posters. The worst thing that can happen as a parent is if I'm sitting and the people in front of me stand up with a big poster and I miss seeing my child walk across the stage. Or they start stomping their feet and hooping and hollering and I miss my child's name being crossing that stage. Imagine how your parent would feel if they miss your name being called because someone else is not doing what they're supposed to. So if everybody does what they're supposed to and remain quiet while the names are being called, everybody gets to hear their name. You guys have spent 13 years in school, if you include kindergarten, 13 years to get to this point. It's a milestone. It's important. It's important to you. It's important to your families. So we want to celebrate you. We want you to celebrate and hoop and holler, but do it after the ceremony. The guests will not be allowed, will, no guests will be allowed to enter the stadium once the seniors start coming in. We don't want guests coming in and interfering with your moment. When you're walking in, it's your time. So make sure your guests are arriving on time. Tell them, let them know. Once the seniors start walking in, we're shutting the gates to the guests until after the seniors are in and have been seated. During the ceremony, please remind them that about the screaming and the yelling and the stomping of the feet. This is very personal to me. When my oldest daughter graduated in 2011, I missed hearing her name because folks were screaming. I can't repeat that moment. I'll never get that moment back. Your parents will never get that moment back because someone else was yelling and screaming. So please, 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 if nothing else, make sure your guests understand how important it is to remain quiet in that stadium and in those stands while that's going on. When it's time and you've turned that tassel and you are official graduates, you're gonna be marching out. You can wave at your families, et cetera, as you're walking out, but the guests will not be allowed to leave the stadium until all of our graduates have had that moment to walk out of that sta stadium for the last time together. So our graduation rules, and you can see them all there, Wake County Board policies have to be followed at all times. There will be a professional photographer that is taking a picture of each senior as they are presented the diploma. They, we are requesting that the family and friends take pictures from their seats. They will not be allowed to stand along the edge of the stadium at the fence to take pictures. They're going to get better pictures from up in the stands. Fines and fees, again, must be paid by Friday, May 21st in order to walk at the graduation ceremony 
and receive that diploma. Remember that you're going to get your tickets. Um, and that is a typo. It's not at senior day. It's at graduation rehearsal on June 7th. Ms. Scales and I will make sure we fix that before we put this presentation out. Sorry. Graduation procedures. Um, I'm really talking to my seniors. If a senior is not here, parents, please make sure that you've asked your student to check and read this presentation. We're going to review all of this at senior day and we're going to talk about it at rehearsal, but I just want to make sure everybody has a clear understanding about the way this is going to run. What we are going to be doing is, as I said, we're going to ask that the seniors meet at their designated time in the gym. We're going to be lining everybody up that morning. You're going to be checked in by staff. You're going to make sure that they know who you are so that we can mark you off. The guests will go directly to the stadium with their tickets. Again, we've talked about family groups will sit together. The seniors, once we're ready to go, we are going to walk you in a single filed line, six feet apart through the bus lot doors and down the driveway to the stadium. We will walk into the stadium to pomp and circumstance and give you that moment, that shining moment together as a class of 2021. And you will go to your seat. You will just fill in and we're gonna practice this so you'll know how this works and you will remain standing. The reason we're gonna remain standing is we're gonna do the national anthem or the Pledge of Allegiance, one of the two. And we wanna make sure that you're standing and ready to go. We're gonna practice before this about how to remove our caps so that we are honoring that tradition. And then in a group, we will tell you to please be seated. The seniors will be walking across stage. That ceremony stage will be located in the middle of the field on the 50 yard line. And you will make sure that you're following the directions of our junior marshals. The junior marshals are a group of students who really put in a lot of effort at graduation and really do a great job helping you stay where you need to go and you're following them so that you don't have to worry about it. Once you've gotten your diploma, you will come up, you will cross the stage, get your diploma from Mr. Bazell, and you will go back to your seat. And then, and there's a little map for you to kind of see what it's going to look like. And this is our, this is what we are hoping it's going to look like. It's obviously a drawing. Um, we've never done this before. Like you've never done this before. We've done plenty of graduations. We just haven't done one on our own football stadium. So we're going to practice this on June the 7th. Again, that's that mandatory event where you're going to get your tickets. And we're going to go through all of this with you. Not only how to walk across stage and everything, but we're gonna actually walk you down from the gym so that you can practice that walk as well so you know what that's going to look like. If you've ever gone to a football game, you know that's a little bit of a hill too, so that's not wearing heels is a good thing there as well. After the ceremony, we are going to exit the seniors. We will not let any of the audience exit until the seniors have left the stadium. Seniors will be escorted up through the athletic hallway into the commons in order to pick up their diplomas. We are going to pick up our diplomas inside the building so that you don't get them must. You're going to maybe be a little hot and we're going to want to make, keep those really looking nice for years to come. In the commons area is where you're going to meet up with your guests and we're going to ask for seniors and guests to exit through the front doors. The reason we're asking for that is because we have another graduation that will be starting soon after yours and we want to make sure that everybody's in going in one direction. We ask that all seniors and guests exit the campus within 20 minutes after the conclusion of their graduation. Not only is that so that we have room um, in the stadium, but so we have room in the parking lot as well. And we just want to make sure that we are not getting the two groups pushed together too much. So for those students who families just aren't comfortable with being at a live graduation ceremony, there will be an alternative diploma distribution event. This will happen Friday afternoon. Those students that choose to do this event will still have four tickets. So they will be able to come in one family at a time into the commons area receive their cap and gown, their, or not their cap and gown, sorry, their diploma, dressed in their cap and gown with their family members, and we will have some stages set up, staging areas set up for some pictures so that you can take pictures and then exit. We will not be able to mail diplomas home. So if you choose not to participate in either of these events, We'll um, address that 
in just a second. Just to clarify about the photo opportunities, we will not have a photographer on site. You will be able to take your own photos during this alternative diploma event. So if you're not going to participate in either of those two ceremonies, either the live events in the stadium or this alternative event that afternoon, and we'll address the exact times and put that out once we know exactly what time. You can arrange for picking up your diploma in the front office, but it would have to be after June 14th. All right, so we've talked a little bit about this, but now we're really gonna make sure that everybody is on the same page. We are going to be doing a senior day RSVP form. We are gonna require that the entire senior class please submit one of these forms. And what this is going to do is give us an accurate head count for not only graduation, but senior day. We're gonna have a senior day picnic and we wanna make sure that we order the correct amount of food. So one of the things that you will have to indicate is whether you plan to eat at senior day. Senior day is one of those mandatory events, but if you don't want to eat with us, we fully understand that and we just want to get an accurate head count. We've got a tiny URL up there for you, which is tinyurl.com backslash WHS 2021 RSVP. And we will post this as well later. Sorry, my dogs. Um, we will post this presentation, but we will also post this link separately. And I will be sending this link out to the seniors in their email. So again, they need to be checking their email. I had a senior in my third period today tell me, oh, I don't check my email scales. I was like, couldn't you please start? If you do not RSVP, we won't know and we wanna have as much information as we can. So please, please, please make sure that you handle your RSVPs by April 23rd. And that link is there. We'd love for you to go ahead and start. Feel free if you wanna tell us right now, go ahead. So, this year, and, and we've started this maybe two years ago, Miss Scales, yes, to give every senior the opportunity to speak at graduation. We have two graduation ceremonies, so we need two graduation speakers. This is a chance for you to submit a speech and a video and all of the information is there and then a committee of staff members or it's all the staff members mm -hmm. all of the staff members will get a chance to watch your video and vote and that's how it's going to be chosen miss scales and myself do not participate in the voting we're too heavily invested as your graduation coordinator council we don't feel that it's fair for us to participate in the choosing the staff members will be choosing now the deadline for this is this friday april 16th at 2 30. but we emailed about this months ago Two months ago it's been out there and several emails have gone out so make sure if you are interested in being a speaker at graduation that you get this done by April 16th. Make sure that when you're recording your speech in the Flipgrid, that you're demonstrating your ability to public speak. Not everyone can do that, and that's fine. You can record multiple times and save the best one to submit on that Flipgrid. The link to the Flipgrids and all are in those emails that we've sent to you. So check your emails. They're also in the, the aren't they in that RSVP form, Ms. Case? They, no, it is in your Wakefield High School Student Senior page. It is in your email and um, it is posted on the school's website. Like uh, on the, if you go to students, seniors, there's a huge announcement there and the link is there. But remember, the deadline is this Friday, April 16th, with tomorrow being an asynchronous day. It's a great day to get your video done and submitted. We would like to have lots to choose from and vote on. There's some more information. Your content, when you're speaking, make sure that you're staying on top of it, that you're organized, and it flows well from one thought to another. Make sure when you're recording your video that you're, you're having eye contact like I am now through the camera. Make sure that that eye contact is there. Looking at the entire audience, 
when you speak publicly, you want to continue to constantly look to everybody so that everyone feels like you're speaking directly to them. Stand up straight. You don't want to sit here and rock or shift or this kind of thing. Use that public speaking ability that you have. These were emailed out February 25th. So make sure that you have gone back and checked your student email. We really, really, really want some participation in this. And you want to represent your class. This is a huge honor to be selected. It's something you'll remember for the rest of your lives is your graduation ceremony. I remember mine. Yeah, prior to this, these last couple of years, it was always the valedictorian and the salutatorian. Well, we don't do that anymore. So anybody, it doesn't matter what your GPA is. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter if you are popular or not popular, athlete or not athlete. Anyone in the class is eligible to be a graduation speaker. Okay. We do do some voting on the class song, quote, flower and color. This is something we traditionally do every year. Um, and no, this year is no different. The tiny URL is posted there. And again, this will be emailed out to seniors as well so that you can vote. So the, some notes and reminders. Friday, May 21st is when the fines are due in the media center. Senior information sheets, reporting your awards, your scholarships, other information, all due Friday, May 21st. Make sure that you're using that scholarship award form to report that can be found on the school website. And Ms. Onsbacher talked about that earlier. May 22nd is our graduation parade. Senior day, May 26th. Rehearsal, June 7th. Ceremony one at 6 p.m. you'll be rehearsing. Ceremony two at 7 p.m. you'll be rehearsing. And just a reminder, ceremony one is A through L-I, and ceremony two is L-O through Z. And then the big day. The day you've been preparing for since you were five years old in kindergarten. Arriving at the gym, be in your seat by your time slot. You can refer back to the schedule. Ceremony one will begin promptly at 8.30. Ceremony two at 11 o'clock. Senior fines and fees, make sure you have checked destiny to see if you have any fines. The senior fee, I'm gonna let Ms. Um, Scales talk about real quick. So just a reminder about the senior fee. We've talked about this, we've emailed about it, but a lot of people still kind of ask questions about it. The senior fee is able to be paid through the online payment system, which is placed on a link under the parent section of the Wakefield website. And it's also under the student section of the Wakefield website. Right now we have a currently 176 seniors that have not paid that senior fee. Most people think that the senior fee is going to pay for the entire graduation ceremony, and that's all it's paying for. But unfortunately, that is not accurate. The senior fee, majority of that pays for your diploma, your diploma cover, and your academic stole. The rest we divvy up between graduation. But for the most part, your senior fee covers the things you're going to be tangibly, physically given by Wakefield High School. So a couple of reminders. If your senior fee has not been paid by May 1st, you're going to get an email from me. I've already sent a few out reminding people to make sure this is paid. And eventually this is going to roll into being a fine. If you have any fines on rehearsal or senior day, you will not get your tickets for graduation until that fee, that fee or that fine has been paid. Right now it can still be paid on the OSP, but please hear me, don't just assume you haven't paid it if you're not sure. I would rather you email me, eScales or Ms. Brown, rbrown4 at WCPSS and ask us so I can look up whether your fee has been paid or not. I keep meticulous records and I try to make sure that I keep everybody on point. So if you're not sure, please ask before you just go ahead and pay it again, because then we have to issue you a refund and it's a huge process for our bookkeeper. And we just would like to avoid that. If you're not sure about whether you have any fines or not, first thing you want to do is check destiny and go and see if you have any outstanding books. That information is also linked on the Wakefield's website under students, under seniors. It's towards the bottom, but it is posted. And I've emailed that out a couple of times to you. 
please, 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 if you are not sure how to do that, let Miss Deaton or Mr. Smith in the media center know. And if you're not sure how to get a hold of them, let me know and I'll tell you how to get a hold of them. Last but not least, if you have a question, if you have a question that we did not answer, we have a tiny URL up on the screen and you are, feel free to go ahead and submit those questions there. We try to cover everything, but maybe we missed something that's specific to your situation and we didn't cover that. So please feel free to submit those questions. If it's a question that we think is good for the group, we'll post answers for those questions. But if it's a question that's specific to your situation, there's a place for you to submit your email and we'll email you back and give you that answer once we have it or if we have it. If you have specific student services questions, Ms. Onsbacher has said, as she said earlier, to please contact her at msonsbacher at wcpss.net. But for all announcements, forms, the senior timeline, this presentation and video, please make sure you're going to the Wakefield website, you're going to the students tab, and then you're going to the seniors. Everything that I email to you, I post on the seniors page as well. I do it, so I know it's going up there. So if you're not sure, email us your questions or fill out that tiny URL, WHS grad QS, questions QS, and we will be happy to get you answers once we can. We really appreciate you coming and bearing with a little bit of our technical issues and a dog barking. And I'm gonna let Mr. Bazell or Mr. Cummings end our meeting. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Scales. Um, on behalf of the Wakefield High School administration, uh, we hope this information session has been informative and we really look forward to presenting a, um, um, a, a normal graduation ceremony or as normal as we can under the current circumstances. I know, or I should say, we know it's been tough for students and parents and our staff, but um, the end is, is near, and uh, we want to make this a uh, special event for everyone that participates.